Uh, I have been informed that uh, Jared's going to drop by my place for a cup of coffee tomorrow. Right. Anybody want in on that? Right. Come on by. Yay. Okay, take a few minutes out and then we'll go into the sophist. Bombs. No, not a bomb. Hand grenades. No. She's like the best looking vice principal I've ever seen. From Black Africa. <laughs> now this is dangerous. What? Now, this is very dangerous. What is it? Oh, watch it. Watch it. Your pre precious Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It smells so good. Good, good, good. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's lime, lime and soda. Yeah. Soda? Mm -hmm. You drinking soda? I wouldn't take it as Why? Deal. I think you have the opportunity to. No, no, I think it's just plain water. Oh, good. Water yeah. and wine. Yeah. No. Okay. I correct it. Maybe you shouldn't stop going to the school. Because one thing that does sometimes happen, from my experience in mm -hmm. my, my school, is the principal mm -hmm. who meet together. When we say it's in our school district, all the principals, vice principals, and representative teachers from each site went together and talked about different things. It just seems like we don't want to be the There, some of them are just creepy. That's the nature of admin. Now, here's something. No. Good. Let me talk about something for a few minutes, okay? Um, <clears throat> Quantum physics is a great game. Not because the whole object, you can look at it over time and you can say the objects they study are increasingly smaller and smaller and smaller. At a certain point, sometimes called Planck's length, anything beyond that point you cannot use old notions of empiricism. But fundamentally, because the object you're studying no longer have any mass. And they change positions without going through space. interesting but a new study relatively new I can't tell some raises the question if there are subatomic particles that in some way stay together but they don't have any mass therefore there can't be any gravity that holds them together or so they combine in some way or it's, it's impossible. So this guy, um, I don't know his first name, but uh, uh, Van der Waal said, hey, you know what, on the subatomic uh, there is somehow some kind of force field that's around them. It's not gravity. But it maintains them. That was considered quite an important discovery. <coughs> because up to this point, it was a mystery. What is it that is able to keep certain subatomic particles in certain arrangements 
and there doesn't appear to be anything there that keeps them in the arrangement they have. And so, uh, look, let this be any object you want. Right, made of four parts. Now, we can study all kinds of things about these parts. Uh, each right, and to the whole and their relation to the whole and the, the, the way parts relate to parts. And if you want to make it even cl cleaner, the two relationship of the whole, there can be a whole to parts and parts to whole. So, now, the key thing in this crazy game of philosophy is the Greeks ask a kind of question that we don't ask. So let me ask you, is this a meaningful question? What must exist to keep these relations of parts to parts. Just to make it simpler. So like here, if this thing is to continue to go on, must you not kind of explain what property is it that keeps that, that object going and staying the way it is? Why don't the parts just scatter? Yeah, you would say what, Steve? No, you can answer it. Come on. Vander Waals force. How does that help this? Well, you're going to have to go into the spiritual realm in order to discuss physics. Yeah, Well, look here. If you're saying there must be something around it. That keeps it together. By the way, would that be a part of it? Not of it, but of some whole. But wait a minute. We never identified that as a part. If it's a part, must it share the same qualities as other parts? In that case, that would be, that would be the case. Size, size, shape, mass. If you want to say there's something that holds that together, question. Is that another part you assume assuming must exist? If so, then all of these things are not true. There's something missing. Huh? Yeah. What, is that right? Except every, every part needs that. And, and, and you can say the same thing for all the parchments equally in some way. Well, mustn't that be another part? 
since it's functioning in a very ideal way? It looks like it. Well, then what we think of as a whole object is not true. We leave out perhaps one of the most important parts. Agree? Agree. Yep. Oh, uh, Plato deals with this in the sixth hypothesis, and he says that given this, there must be some kind of a bond that holds it together. Similar, similar. Now there are two views about the nature of that bond because there are two kinds of things. There can be things that exist without qualification and have some kind of nature of being and um, therefore we can call this the realm of being oh by the way there's also we can call this um, the one that is Oh, by the way, equally you can talk about its opposite, the one that is not. And by the way, it could be said to have parts because this can be a fiction. some kind of a fantasy. Or something seen at a distance and you have the wrong, well, you see well, but you're judging it incorrectly and therefore you're labeling something falsely. But in any case, um, you know what? The same argument. If there is such a thing as that which is not, it can said to be have parts. Must it not in the same way need a bond around that to keep it from separating? Now there are two views of this. If you hold to the notion uh, that what keeps this together, this bond, can either be The bond of being, or it can be the bond of not being. Now, there are two views of this. Let me get Plato's. He says, the being that is must have a bond of being. The negative, the bond must be the bond of not being. There's another view. 
that if this is all positive and this is all negative because of the realm of what is not, then what must keep it together must be the opposite of that which is in itself being bonded. If that's the case, then we have to switch this around, depending upon which way you want to reason. But the important thing with this way is that when, when this is assigned as the bond of not being, that's a perfect example of non being. That's the way Plato talks about non being. Now we're also in the sophist, and he's talking about non being. I wonder whether he's using the same logic or a different kind of logic when he talks about non being. Hmm. Agree? Agree. Good question. So I just thought we'd take this through this. Now, what's interesting is that includes uh, well, there's an extra problem. I don't know what I should bring in, but I'll sneak it in. Um, um, this also has a kind of participation in Usia and a non-participation in Usia. And since it is something that exists, even though we're talking about what is not, there's a way in which you can talk about being, being here as one of its attributes. If that's true, then this whole discussion that we went through only deals with this, this part of non-being which can be said to include being. But that's a discussion that you can take later. Okay, just... Uh, so what's the point? There's a legitimate way of talking about non-being that's in the hypothesis, the sixth one, sixth hypothesis. And now we're going into the sophos, and now we're going to the section on non-being. Now, one of the key ideas of the Logos, which appears in the sixth as well, I should say, is that he says the Logos only, only can really function among objects that exist. not non-exist. So, let's get into it. Where do we leave off? Let me take five minutes out first. Okay? Let the two minutes run.
Okay, that's where we left off talking about the dialectic and his view of the dialectic. And we left that, did we not? Okay. Want to read? Sure. Where? Page? Page 405. Right. Another reader? Oh, me. Thank you. 254 BC at the top. Since, therefore, we are agreed that some of the classes will mingle with one another and others will not, and some will mingle with few and others with many, and that there is nothing to hinder some from mingling universally with all, let us next proceed with our discussion by investigating not all the forms or ideas, lest we become confused among so many, but some only, selecting them from those that are considered the most important. Let us first consider their several natures, then what their power of mingling with one another is. And so, if we cannot grasp being and not being with perfect clearness, we shall at any rate not fail to reason fully about them, so far as the method of our present inquiry permits. Let us in this way see whether it is, after all, permitted us to say that not being really is, although not being, and yet come off unscathed. Okay. Um, how many points? Some of the classes will mingle with one another. Others will not. That's the same statement, of course. Some will mingle with few, others with many. And there's uh, nothing to hinder all of them. But there's nothing to hinder some of them mingling university with all. Okay, then let's go on with our discussion. Why? Because not all the forms or ideas must be become confused among the many. There are so many of them. Well, in any case, let's consider their several natures, then what their power of mingling with one another is. By the way, did he pick out one of them? Well, okay, let's go. Yes, that is the proper thing for us to do. The most important, surely, of the classes or genera are those which we just mentioned, being itself and rest and motion. Um, by the way, it'd be worthwhile knowing if he has discussed those things before. So go ahead. Yes, by far. And further, Two of them, we say, cannot mingle with each other. Decidedly not. But being can mingle with both of them, for they both are. Of course. Then these prove to be three. To be sure. Each of them is, then, other than the remaining two, but the same as itself. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> Each of, them, each of them is then other than the remaining two. And the same as itself. By the way, um, is it possible that in rest and motion there's being? He's saying, no, no, they're separate and distinct. But let's leave that minor point. Go ahead. Yes. Well, what do we mean by these words, the same and other, which we have just used? 
We didn't mention other as one of the subjects, but we'll let that go. <coughs> two new classes, different from the other three, but always a necessity mingled with them? And must we conduct our inquiry on the assumption that there are five classes, not three? Or are we unconsciously speaking of one of those three when we say the same or other? Perhaps. Um, perhaps. What does that mean? He's holding back? He's, he's holding back? Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps means he yeah. is not sure. Well, yeah, yeah. well, okay, perhaps. Um, or, or he doesn't agree and he doesn't want to say. Wants to see the argument one way or the other. So maybe being and the same are one. Okay, good. Go ahead. But certainly motion and rest are neither other nor the same. How so? Whatever term we apply to rest and motion in common cannot be either of those two. Why not? Because motion would be at rest and rest would be in motion. In respect of both, for whichever the two became other would force the other to change its nature into that of its opposite. Let me ask you a question. Since it would participate in its opposite. Well, is there a difference between these two terms? Same and similar. Hmm. There's no role for similar in this discussion. There's something about them that may be similar to one another. But he's using same as, as identical. Go ahead. Exactly so. But certainly partake of the same and the other. Yes. Then we must not say that motion or rest either is the same or other. No. But should we conceive of being and the same as one? Perhaps. But if being and the same have no difference of meaning, then when we go on and say that both rest and motion are, we shall be saying that they are both the same since they are. But surely that hey, is Just because they are doesn't make them the same, does it? It's a minor, go ahead. Then it is impossible for being and the same to be one. So we shall consider the same a fourth class in addition to the other three. Certainly. Then shall we call the other a fifth class? Or must we conceive of this and being as two names for one class? Maybe. But I fancy you admit that among the entities, some among the real being. Some are always conceived as absolute and some as relative. Of course. And other is always relative to other. Is it not? Yes. It would not be so if being and the other were not utterly different. If the other, like being, partook of both absolute and relative existence, there would be also among the others that exist another not in relation to any other. But as it is, we find that whatever is other is just what it is through compulsion of some other. The facts are as you said. Then we must place the nature of the other as a fifth among the classes in which we select our examples. Yes. And we shall say that it permeates them all for each of them is other than the rest, not by reason of its own nature, but because it partakes of the idea of the other. Exactly. 
Let us now state our conclusions, taking up the five classes one at a time. Ah. Take motion first. We say that it is entirely other than rest, do we not? We do. Then it is not rest. Not at all. But it exists by reason of its participation in being. Yes, it exists. Now motion again is other than the same. Sorry, I go that over again. Sure. Um, let us now state our conclusions, taking up the... Um, it's clear that motion... Oh. Well, the point you just made. Um, take motion first. No. We say that it is entirely other than rest, do we not? Mm -hmm. We do. Then it is not rest. Not at all. But it exists by reason of its participation in being. Yes, it um, exists. Where's the discussion of participation? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what's the finest number are you on? Well, where I just read was uh, 255. Uh, e. Okay. E ten. Um. Go ahead. Well, he mentions participation at two fifty five A ten. Yeah. On page four oh seven. But it exists by reason of its participation and being. Mm -hmm. Where's the discussion on that? Well, what about um, page? Why would you go on? 407. Mm -hmm. The paragraph in the middle of the page. It's just a final. 255A, A10 through 14, 10 through B1. I, I, I'm not, I don't know that it's a discussion, but participation is mentioned. Yeah, there's participation and it's opposite. Mm. Right? Uh, what do you think of that? What does that mean? <laughs> to whatever degree these are uh, opposed, mm. right? there's participation and it's opposite. So if these two can be said to be opposed, that must mean there's participation in its opposite. Then, uh, does the opposite then make the, the difference? What is it to say, participation in its opposite? Oh. Well, it's predicated upon the assumption that comes before that, where yeah, it says, yeah. whatever term we apply to rest and motion in common cannot be either of those two. Uh, so if you can apply a term to both of them in common, then they must have a participation in one another. Well, if they have something in common. If they have something applied to them in common, yes. But what's in common between rest and motion? Being ideas. They're both ideas. Huh? And earlier he was speaking about them. Well, if, they're, if they're both ideas, if they're opposites, then why do they have to participate in its opposite? If these are opposites and they participate in their opposites, then this participates in this and participates in that. 
Well, he's saying if you can apply something to both of them, then they must participate in each other. But what does it mean for a rush to participate in emotion? No, oh, but we're going too fast. Maybe we should go slower. <laughs> oh, oh, rest in motion, yeah. Okay, let's go back where we were then. Um, when you get to the good part, um, the 255 uh, yeah. E, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but it exists by reason of his participation in being. Okay. So now, other, watch other now. What's it going to do? Okay. See the idea of participation? We're going to get a more interesting concept coming up. is other than the same. You're about right. Therefore it is not the same. No, it is not. But yet we found it was the same because all things partake of the same. Certainly. Hold it. Where, where are you? Oh, uh, page 411. Um, 411? Yes. I'm going too fast. Okay. Go back to the then we must, we must place the nature of the other, mm -hmm. which is in the bottom two paragraphs and 409. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at other. Go ahead. Then we must place the nature of the other as a fifth among the classes in which we select our examples. Yes. And we shall say that it permeates them all, for each of them is other than the rest, not by reason of its own nature, but because it partakes of the idea of the other. Hey. Other participates in all of them. <laughs> Is that right? We shall say that it permeates them all, for each is other than the rest. Which, which, so is it the other participates of them all, or they all participate of the other? No, it participates them all. Yes, it what? Per no wait, it permeates them all. Permeates, yes, excuse me, go ahead. If it permeates them all, then it is present in all of them. Right? So that they're all other. Other than another, other than each other. Since it permeates them all. 255E4. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Because it partakes of the idea of other. Right? So there's partaking of the idea of other. So they all then must part partake of the other, even though the other permeates all of them. Look here. Um, all of these, all of these are permeated by other.
and at the same time, well, and at the same time, it partakes of the idea of the other. Quicker. Does it not, we have to figure out this curious question. If this permeates them all, why would it have to participate in the idea of other? Shouldn't have to. One or the other. Both yeah. seems redundant. Well, well, try it again. But then, the sense after that, for each of them is other than the rest. So far, we agree. But then he says, not by reason of its own nature. So he's trying to fiddle with this and say they're other than. Uh, each of them is other than each other. Yeah, yet at the same time. But not because what they are. Right. Not because of what permeates them. No. Or what they are. But because they participated of the idea of love. Uh, does that make sense? No. No. No, but I mean, that, I think that's why his try. he makes it sound good by saying not by reason of its own nature. No. And putting participation above that. And, if, and in the same way, that if the one participates in all of them, other participates in all of them, why does it have to participate in the, why do they have to participate in the idea of other? Well, because it's not their own nature. So it's got to be foreign to it. Yeah. And 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 it's difficult, <laughs> it doesn't permeate, it permeates them all, but not of their nature. Yeah, that's the problem. Or its nature. It's, so it's not because of the nature of the other that they are other than the other, but because of their participation. I don't say, I'm not saying that makes sense. Why wouldn't it be its own nature? And be attributable to participation. Look, and we shall say that it permeates them all, and this is the reason. For each of them is other than the rest. It's called the reason. <laughs> uh, what's this reason that they permeate them all? For each of them is other than the rest. Agree? That's, that's the reason why they participate in them all. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Let's go further. Okay, here we go. It would be other then. Okay, go ahead. Yes, Barbara. I'm sorry, Rory. Top of 411. I'll get to it right exactly. yeah. Let us now state our conclusions. Oh, this is a good one. Taking up the five classes one at a time. How? Ah. Take motion first. We say that it is entirely other than rest, do we not? We do. Then it is not rest. Not at all. But it exists by reason of its participation in being. Yes, it exists. Wait a minute. Uh, how does that answer the, the, the issue at hand? Take motion first. Is it entirely other than the rest? Oh. Yes. What's the reason for it? Other than rest. Yeah, other than, yeah. What about that? Motion. We say it's entirely other than rest. For what reason? Well, the reasoning would be the previous 
part we read, because it participates of the idea of other, it's other than rest. Okay. And is not, therefore, rest. That it exists by reason of its participation in being. We're trying to find out why he makes a, 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 a distinction between motion and rest. Well, it's entirely different. But it exists by reason of its participation in being. It's nice to know that he has a reason for showing that it exists because there's participation in being, but what has that got to do with motion and rest? Oh, okay, forget that, go ahead. Now motion again is other than the same. Go ahead. You're about right. Therefore it is not the same. No, it's not. But yet we found it was the same because all things partake of the same. Certainly. Right, right, right. Now we have all things partake of the same. So by the way, would you not agree from what we're doing, we're adding to each of these separate ideas the qualities of all of them? That's where we're going. And that's why they're different. Well, they're all the same. But if all of these ideas participate in all the others, then there's no difference among any of them. But they have all the other parts of it than themselves. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says there are five separate classes. No? no okay, go ahead. <laughs> then we must admit that motion is the same and is not the same. Oh, both. Go ahead. And we must not be disturbed thereby. For when we say it is the same and not the same, we do not use the words alike. When we call it the same, we do so because it partakes of the same in relation to itself. And when we call it not the same, we do so on account of its participation in the other, by which it is separated from the same and becomes not that, but other so that it is correctly spoken of in turn as not the same. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes uh, not that, but other. Right? So it becomes other, so that it is correctly spoken of in turn as not the same. Motion, yes. Yeah. If, if that, that's a classic argument of sophistry, there's nothing other that doesn't talk about what that other is. No. Okay, just, just a couple more pages. Where we will. We'll, um... Then, even if absolute motion partook in any way of rest, it would not be absurd to say. It would not be absurd to say it was at rest. It would be perfectly right if we are to admit that some of the classes will mingle with one another and others will not. And, sure. and if you were to go back to 254C, uh, uh, you could see the contrast that he's making, but let's push it for a moment. And surely we demonstrated that before we took up our present points, we proved that it was according to nature. Yes, of course. Okay, conclusion. Then let us re recapitulate. Motion is other than the other just as we found it to be other than the same, and then rest. Is that true? 
inevitably. And it is in a sense not other and also other according to our present reasoning. True. Well, how about the next point? Shall we say next that motion is other than the three, but not other than the fourth? That is, if we have agreed that the classes about which and within which we undertook to carry on our inquiry are five in number? How can we say that? Well, we cannot admit the number is less than we showed just now. Then we may fearlessly persist in contending that motion is other than being. Yes, most fearlessly. It is clear then that motion really is not, and also that it is, since it partakes of being. That is perfectly well, clear. Well, it's very clear that motion really is not because it participates of being. Well, that also... Right? I mean, right, also, right? That is perfectly clear. In relation to motion, then, not being is, that is inevitable. And this extends to all the other classes, for in all of them the nature of other so operates as to make each one other than being, and therefore not being. So we may from this point of view rightly say, <laughs> of all of them alike, that they are not. And again, since they partake of being, that they are and have being. Yes, I suppose so. And so, in relation to each of the classes, being is many, and not being is infinite in number. So it seems. Here it comes. Then being itself must also be said to be other than all other things. Yes, it must. And we conclude that whatever the number of other things is, just that is the number of the things in relation to which being is not. For not being those things, it is itself one. And again, those other things are not unlimited in number. That is not far from the truth. Though we must not be disturbed by this either, since by their nature the classes have participation in one another. But if anyone refuses to accept our present results, let him reckon with our previous arguments, and then proceed to reckon with the next step. That is very fair. What conclusion did we reach? That the nature of the classes have participated in one another. We're back to that theme. Not four out of five, but they all participate in one another. It's back to that theme. And if they all participate in one another, then you can put in each one of them the others. Is that right? Then there's no other. And his conclusion, if that's true, then we have found non-being. Yeah, right. Yes, because all of them are other than being. So they must not be. But if they all are, if they all partake in, in all of them, then there's no difference among them. Then there is only one class. There's no difference among them. But isn't his strategy to say, yes, that's true, but I can also look at them each in itself. So that's why he's saying, um, like, each with respect to itself is the same. But do any of them have a nature in itself if they're all being permeated and participate in one another? Well, no, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to figure out if it's legit to have these two classes. He wants to order it in two classes, right? With respect to others, he's going to say something with respect to itself. <clears throat> but then by doing that, he seems to be saying, um, like, you can't, they, they don't, you can hold those separate, you don't have to mingle those two ideas together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's like each thing has a dual nature. 
teach him is that where if it has its own nature must it keep its own nature intact then I don't mind that then you look here then you have to do this As a result of that, right, as a result of that, you also have to say that uh, um, they will participate in this, and at the same time, each of these permeates it all. And that's true for all of the others. So isn't it like kind of like the brilliant light of being? It has aspects, but in reality it's one. Well, you see now we take other. portray the red as And continue for all, all five. Yeah. Hmm. Except, I mean, on the on the outside, instead of other, you have to replace it with being. Right? It switches position. I'm just saying, in the second diagram, since other is in the center, well, on the outside, it's not other but being. That's also true. No. But it's also, it also can be here.